Hey guys, my name is Poker Shadow, and today I wanted to talk a bit about one of my favorite games, Slime Rancher. I've been seeing a few people struggling with Slime Rancher's rush mode, especially in getting the Rush Plot Master achievement, where you need to reach at least 75,000 new bucks in rush mode. Seeing as Rush Road is one of my favorite modes, and on average I can get a minimum of about 150,000 new bucks in a run, I thought I'd make a video explaining about how I go about this for people needing a hand. Or, you know, those just curious about Rush Mode. For those who don't know what Rush Mode is in Slime Ranger, it is a secondary game mode where you're given a very limited amount of time to earn as many new bucks as you can using whatever means necessary. You do get all the upgrades and expansions right off the bat to make things a little easier, and the plot selling price is fixed, unlike the main game, but everything else is completely up to you. It sounds fairly simple, but given how many mistakes I see in runs posted to like Reddit, YouTube, and the Steam discussion boards, I thought I'd give out some general tips and tricks, then walk you through my most recent run to see it all in action. Just a quick note, this was recorded in version 1.4.0. If a future update changes any of the following advice or mechanics in any drastic ways, I might make an update video in the future about that. So let's start with the main mistakes I see many players making when attempting rush mode. Not getting all the plot bonuses, not completing quests, and not popping gold gordos. Let's dig into these. First off, plot bonuses are bonuses you receive having sold at least 25 of each plot type in the market. So why is this important? Well, they actually give you a massive score multiplier bonus at the end of a run. Say, at the end of your run, you get around about 100,000 new bucks. Without the multipliers, you're left with just that. But if you get all the plot bonuses, you could easily double that score. Take my ending of this run that I'm about to show you. I end the game with 220,000 new bucks, but with the bonuses, that suddenly jumps up to 430,000. So this really does make a lot of difference. It can be annoying to get them all, but if you want a high score, I definitely recommend doing them all. Not completing all your quests. Now I can understand why a lot of people ignore these, since in the main game, doing these quests don't really benefit you at all other than a little bit of cash, helping you unlock things like Mochi's Ranch, and, you know, seeing Bob, of course. But here in Rush Mode, the quests are actually omni-important. They're the only way you can get the full five-day time limit in Rush Mode. If you ignore them, you're actually only going to get about three days in-game. Sometimes they will ask for the worst things ever, but if you want that full run with a high score, they are essential. I've had to restart entire runs because Ogden will ask me for a phase limit, and I just don't have one. And I can't afford to sit in the ruins for a whole day just to wait for one to grow, so... It's a pain, but it is also super vital to do all your quests, if you can. Especially since the reward for finishing them, other than more time, is Gilded Ginger. Which leads to... Popping Gold Gordo Slimes. You should know that gold plots are the most valuable ones in the whole game, so honestly without getting some, your run's gonna be stuck in the low numbers. There are a number of gold gordos around the map, which you can feed three Gilded Gingers to make them explode into a bunch of gold slimes. Buy some fruit at the gold slimes, and bam, you've got yourself a lot of money. Unfortunately, you won't get enough gingers to pop all of the gordos on the map, but you should be able to get at least six if you know where to look. Here are the locations you can find them all in. One is right out the front of your ranch, three on the Dry Reef Cat Island, here, here, and here, one in the ruins, one right in the back of the moss blanket, three over by the volcano, here, here, and here, and two right at the end of the glass desert like this. Gold plots will usually be your best seller when it comes to checking out your end screen, this was mine for the run you're about to see, and it is slightly higher than usual given I accidentally found a glitch, but I will completely go into that later. In general, gold will still always be at your top, even without any glitches. So with those mistakes out of the way, here are some short tips before I walk through my run. In rapid fire, Dervish Mosaic Slimes are your new best friends. They produce the highest value plots of any ranchable slime in the game, and it's pretty easy to farm prickly pears for them to eat. You'll need at least three gate keys to get through the game. While you can just fly into the moss blanket and the indigo plateau without spending any keys, you'll still need two for the ruins and one for the desert. Every time. Drones are your new friends. Setting them to collect all the plots while you're out doing your own thing can help save time and build up the money. Or you can use them to feed your slime so you can do the plots yourself when you're back. 3. If you can, always feed slimes one of their favourite foods to get the four plots out of them rather than two. Which leads into 4. Try not to mix two meat eaters together if you can, it is a lot harder to get them food, and you'll almost never get the favourite food bonus out of them. Use your portable plot seller often. You don't want to be carrying around plots when you need to be grabbing slimes and food frequently, so just get the cash instantly by throwing them in. 
Treasure pods can give you a nice little bonus. If there are any along your path, you should grab them. I won't list them all off because there are a lot, but I'll point out the ones that I use. Treat this like a speed run. Constantly run where you can, fly over gaps to save time, every second counts. And probably the best tip I can give you is, uh, you're gonna have to start being okay with killing slimes. If they are no longer of use to you, keeping them around just isn't worth it anymore. Honestly, just turning them into tars or throwing them in the river is the best way to get more money, because you need to replace them with more high earners. It's cruel, but you're just gonna have to be okay with it. Now with those out of the way, I want to walk you guys through my most recent rush mode run to get a better idea of how you can put all of these things into effect. You can follow along with your own game if you like, but due to RNG reasons, your game's probably going to look way different to mine. I do experiment a lot with my runs, so I won't say what I currently do is the most optimal path. Maybe in a few weeks I'll find a different way to do things, but as of right now, this is what I'm currently doing in all my personal runs. I'm slowly trying to work my way up to the Slime Rush world record, which to my knowledge is this guy over here. But as you can see, even my personal best is still a long way off that goal. It's still plenty to smash the achievement though, so if that's your goal, following what I do is definitely going to get you there. To start off with, I need to clear up my saved games. Since I do this a lot, they can get really cluttered up. It doesn't matter too much, but it does slightly help things to run better if it doesn't have to remember 12 different save files. With that out of the way, set yourself to rush mode. I always give myself the gold slime mic on just so I know it is rush mode, and then hit start. First off, I grab the carrots and the pogo fruit that spawn by your house. Sprinting always, I slap down my teleporters. You don't have to put them here, this is just how I do it. Pink for the moss blanket, blue for the plateau, and grey for the desert. I set up my drones and program them to collect plots for me just so I don't forget to do it later. By the way, if you didn't already know, you can actually rotate your teleporters and drones by holding down right click while in build mode. I run over to Thora to accept her quest. She only wants some carrots, pink slimes, and rock slime, so that's simple enough. I throw on the pink slimes and attempt to trickshot this plot, and uh, it didn't work. I run around the expansion, gathering up all the food I can, then out the side gate. There's carrots here, and a treasure pod. Try to get as many of these as you can for extra cash. I open up the cat teleporter and jump through to the island. There is a money cat, but I have no chickens for it, so I just kind of whack it and then leave. Grab some puddle slimes, usually at least one spawns here and drops a plot for you, but sometimes more can. You can sell that straight away with your portable market and try to remember to use that where you can. You don't want to carry around a bunch of stuff when you don't have to. I run through the area gathering up every pogo and carrot I can find so I can pop Gordos down the line. Once I've gone through the area I head up to the pink Gordo sitting on top here and pop him for the first key. Don't forget your keys! You don't want to be stuck later because you forgot to pick one up. That's happened. Time to head home. Grab some stuff for Thora on the way back but right now my goal is to set up a pond for my puddles. I don't want to carry them around on me anymore. I set them up in the grotto because it has the room for it, and I think it's pretty, but you can put them wherever you want. Now on the way to pink number two. I grab some food along the way and randomly get a gold out of a chest, but I don't actually notice him. I thought he was just a phosphor slime. Back here I go to the treasure pods here, here, and here. Then move up towards the second pink gordo. I pop him with some carrots and grab the key. More food along the way, and once again another gold slime randomly shows up. By the time my brain processes it, it's bounced off a carrot and disappeared. Okay, cool, free plots I guess. I ditch my phosphors to get the gold, but grab them up again a second later, so it's fine. I grab this treasure pod, then a crate, then move on to popping the phosphor gordo down here. Don't forget this pod. I gather up all I want, including the key, then head on my way. I grab this pod over by the gate and one over here by the cats. I did forget this one, but oh well. Time to fly into the mossy blanket. There are multiple ways to get in here without a key, and, but this one is my favorite because... Yeah. I quickly put down my teleporter to get back home and go back to feed the money cat that I heard wandering around. I do get some blows in, so not a wasted time. I finally give Thora her slimes and gather up the ginger. With the ginger, since you don't want to carry them around, throw them in a deposit for safekeeping. I grab the extra puddle, then go dump everyone off in the grotto. Done with that, it's time to head into the ruins. I grabbed three of my gingers, but I probably didn't need to, I could have just put my depositor on the other end, but oh well. Opening up the door, my main goal while in the ruins is to find a phase lemon. And some quantum slimes. After a bit of exploring, I decide to go do the gold gordo, closing this door so they have something to bounce off of. I get an okay amount for them, not the most, but still a good bit of money. 
I also get a phase lemon, so I call that a mission success. I run up the stairs and fly over here to start making my way over to desert. If you're not paying attention to your stamina bar and start flying over without enough to actually make it, you can plunge into a pit and die. I got stuck there once and it ruined a run. Anyway, I hop up here for a treasure pod and then grab some quantum slimes. I make my way to the gate, making sure to get this pod over here, then finally enter the glass desert. To clear up some inventory space, I dump my lemon in a deposit, then fly over to the dervish lago. I pop this boy and grab all nine of the dervishy spawns. Plus a key, of course. I don't grab this pod to my right for some reason, and then head over to the last main key gate I want. I've tested a few areas in the desert, and this spot over here you're looking at seems to have the most reliable spawns for dervish slimes. I could be wrong, it's just that's how it works out for me. Also, fire slimes can appear, as you can see me ditching my dervish slimes for. Put the teleporter down and get rid of my fire slimes so I can go back to get my discarded dervishes. Small tip, shoot the fire slimes at the corners to stop them from going flying out of their pen. I go back for my dervish and then make them a corral. Feed them some fruit just to make sure they're not going to get mad while I'm away. And then I remember my cats are totally a thing. I run back to the desert just to get some rock quartz and slimes to help feed the cats. While doing that, a firestorm starts, so I stand up here to try and see where they land, and then start running around in circles, gathering up as many as I can. I do miss one, but oh well. R.I.P. little dude. I plant my pear at last, and then feed my cats. Just as I go to grab the rock plots I want to do the stone statues, my drone steals them. Thanks, buddy. Oh well, force feeding them, I get them in just a sec. Dropping off my fires, I remember I probably should be feeding my four fireflies. No, I don't remember I have the lemon at this point to make a farm. Gather up some plorts and mix some slimes together, then it's off to the desert once again. I find two mosaics have spawned and mix them with my dervishes. I drop my pogo fruit in a depositor, reminding me that I have those two lemons I should plant. One lemon tree later. Okay, now we'll go do the stone statues. We want to get the mosaic gordo on the way, so we fly up this formation here, jump a few gaps, then come face to face with the lad. Feed him some carrots, then grab all nine of the kids and key. There is a treasure pot over this ledge I grab. Then I grab a chicken to pop the tangle gordo. I put the rock plots in their holes, completely whiffing this shot twice, and then I start watering the oasis patches. You have just enough time to open three of them. So I go with the front two, trying to trick shot the tangle one before I rush over here. I missed the trick shot, but oh well. The other three are more important anyway. I gather up all the dervish and mosaics I can find with these new spawns, leaving me a good haul of 39 slimes in total. Victor has a mission for me when I get back, which we'll deal with in a minute. For now, setting up my money making slimes is priority. I aim to have about 15 per corral, so that one tree harvest can feed a whole tank. While they're small, I just give them some carrots to get the first breeding started, then feed the ones that have already mixed with some prickly pears. After some flailing, everyone is mixed and the drones start the cell. I grab some extra food from everyone outside the teleporters, then start on Victor's quest. Luckily he wants some pretty simple stuff, so I grab most of them in one trip. Check my fireflies, gather up their plorts, Leftover pogo fruit I put into the fire, ignoring some hungry slime faces in the process. I just wanted the fire plots. I check how much time I have left with the quest before deciding to dump my tangle slimes in a corral. I set up a drone to feed them while I'm gone, then head off to get the last of the quest slimes. I see that I haven't popped that gold yet, and decide now's a good time to do that. Throw in some ginger, then I shoot them in the direction of my ranch. This is important because... remember that glitch I mentioned earlier? Yeah, it's because I did this. It wasn't intentional, it just kinda happened. You'll see in a minute. I gather up the plots and sell them, then head back. So here's my glitch. I don't actually see it at first, but a gold slime has somehow wedged himself under my map. But it isn't despawning. I do some maintenance, run past the gold without noticing him again, then head off to do the moss blanket at last. I bag some cats, booms, and honeys, then send the mangoes into a depositor so I can grab some hunter slimes. I was actually pretty satisfied with how many I got this early. Sometimes I can never find the buggers when Victor wants them. Grabbing some pods over here, some last slimes I stumble across, then I'm off home again. I give Victor what he wants and put away the ginger. Over in the expansion I start making more corrals. I mix the honey with my tangle, I for some reason put two meat eaters together, then I feed the honey boys to start the mixing process. 
I give the boomer hunters some chickens, solidifying my bad decision making process. I run back over to my cats when I finally notice the glitched gold slime. Out of curiosity, I fire a carrot at it, only to find holy shit it worked. I do end up pushing him a bit further back in my experiments, but I do eventually find out that I can just keep shooting him and keep getting plots out of him. I forget almost everything I'm doing to play with him. You can see my starving dervishes protest in the background. All of a sudden, a rock cat was in my hands? O okay then? Okay, now I do have to repeat. I have no idea how this happened. This glitch has only ever happened to me once, and it's by pure divine luck that it happened to me while I was recording. I have no idea how to replicate this, so don't rely on this exploit to get a high score. I just wanted to show you my reaction to this weird ass shit. I have actually sent this footage over to the devs just to let them know that this is a thing that can happen. I don't know if it's anything they can fix, but I'm sure it gave them a laugh at least. I finally feed my starving tornado boys to stop them wrecking my home, and desperately make sure they don't cause TARS to happen. Then I get distracted by the gold boy again. After some time, he eventually gets shoved so far back, I just can't reach him anymore. And my attempts to free him only make it worse. I just need to accept that he's gone forever. Oh, right, the farm's dying. I grab more food and slimes from the desert, get attacked by Tars, then feed my poor protesting slimes. The game starts to chug with all the shit happening on screen. But it always does this when it starts to get hot, so it's probably just my laptop that's the problem and not the game itself. After a struggle, I managed to get the tornadoes under control, just in time to do some farm maintenance. By the way, you'll see me do this thing where I press remove crops instead of just manually sucking them off. That's actually for two reasons. One, big time saver in a time sensitive thing, but more importantly, fruit seems to grow faster from a new seed than from a second harvest. You'll lose one fruit and ten bucks in the process, but I think that's a worthwhile trade for the speed of it. Ogden's quest starts, and he's decided he wants two things from the Indigo Plateau, so I guess it's time to head over there. So here's how you can get in without a key. It's actually really simple. You jump up these boulders out the front, float over this gap here, rock climb a little, and now you can just float straight on into it. Not a single key necessary. I grab a pod, and luck lets me have an onion right off the bat. Then... I went and got a drink and forgot to hit record when I came back. Long story short, I grabbed the food I needed, I set up my teleporters on the island, and grabbed the slimes I need and set up corrals for them. I mixed the rad slimes with tangles and the crystal slimes with tangles just for the max profit. When I remember to hit record again, Mochi's quest has started up. Super simple one. I feed my boys, the frame rate drops around them, then for some reason I decide to head to the desert now instead of giving Mochi her plots. I guess I just didn't notice how much time I had left. Anyway, I grab some dervish slimes, I leave some fire to die, then decide to open up that other tangle fountain I didn't hit on my previous time here. One splash and I'm done. I gather up as many as I can, along with some other boys, then head on home. Since I need a new corral and I don't need my rock cats anymore... It's killing time. With a nice new enclosure, I fill it up with the last of my mosaic slimes. I decide to experiment a little. Usually I end up ignoring the lab side of my farm during runs, so I wanted to see if it made much of a difference having some guys over there as well. I mix tangles with dervish just to keep the pair bonus, and set up a drone to auto-feed them from the farm. I don't actually mix them, so this does come back to bite me. I finally remember mochi is a thing, and I only have three minutes left on the clock. I rush to see if my cat still had any rock plots left over, and luckily the drones hadn't taken them yet. I check to see how many bonuses I still need to complete, and it looks like it's only the hunters and crystals left to tick off. I grab my three leftover onions and gather up food, not noticing I only have two minutes left. I finally seem to notice and sprint back with a honey plot before I fuck everything up. Mission saved. Okay, back to the plots over here. I can carry most of it back in one profitable trip. Except the hunter booms. With all that sorted, I have now completed all of the bonuses for the game, meaning my skull will get the max multiplication it can. Now all that's left is to farm up some cash. I feed my slimes for the droves to harvest, then grab some ginger and head to Cat Island. I haven't actually done as many gold gorders as I should yet, so now's my last chance to get them in. I grab some food, then pop the first one. Not a bad hole, but could be better. I pop number two and try to juggle some golds for extra plots. It worked for the most part, but still, I, I could have done better. Now for number three. I get distracted by this dude, so this isn't the most profitable haul, but it's still money. 
I head back home to sell what I got, grabbing some food for the expansion slimes along the way. I don't do all of them for some reason, but oh well. With six minutes left, I do my usual feeding rounds to get the plots flowing again. At the five minute mark, I decide, hey, I can probably do the volcano run. The first gold I got over there was a bit sloppy, but still plots. The second gold goes a lot better, but in my rush, I am messing up a lot. Number three was a bit better, but again, with three minutes left, I can't afford to waste any time. I grab every plot I can see, and then rush home. I remembered my expansion slimes were a thing, and went to go get their plots, but I waste a lot of time selling next to them rather than just doing it by the main group, which would have been a lot better for my drones since they could use the transporter too. I finally run back there and help my drones out in the final push. I leave the last little bit to my drones and decide to see if I can hit that gold boy one last time, but it failed. Alright, I guess I'll feed the carrots to the slimes instead, just to get a few extra plots out of them. As the seconds ticked down, I got as much as I can, but time eventually ran out. And look at that score. This is my personal best so far. Only a few thousand above my previous personal best, but still, I'm, I'm proud of this. My personal best score. Well, I, I mean, including a glitch. Without that weird goal glitch, I probably still would have been around the 300 files a mark, so way better than the achievement, but not quite my personal best of around 400,000 previously. As you can see, I still make a lot of mistakes, and there's tons of room to grow and learn, but I hope it's given you an idea of how a high score attempt works. Even if you only end up following half of these steps, you'll still end up dominating all the rush mode achievements. Hey, if this helped you out in any way, please let me know down in the comments. I'd love to know that this actually did help someone. Rush mode doesn't seem to get too much love, but I honestly think it's my favourite way to play Slime Rancher right now. Hopefully one day I'll work my way up to ND Coton's record and be the rushed mode lord. But until then, thank you so much for watching this. Again, let me know if it helped out in any way. If you liked it, chuck it a like and a subscribe. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know. I'm more than happy to give it a shot with some other topics. Have a good one, guys.